Good afternoon everyone. I am Tuhin Mukherjee from Pennsylvania State University and today I am going to talk about physics informed machine learning to reduce defects in additive manufacturing. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge my co-authors Dr. Bornali Mondol, Dr. Yang Du and Professor Tarashankar Debroy from Pennsylvania State University. As you know, additive manufacturing is used to fabricate complex parts like these two, but one of the main challenges is the formation of defects. So in this talk, I am going to discuss about how a physics informed machine learning can be used to control those defects. Essentially, I am going to talk about what is physics informed machine learning and why that is needed and how that can be used to reduce defects by providing some recent examples. So, um, physics informed machine learning actually learns the physics of the process. So essentially the machine learning algorithm is trained using some mechanistic variables that can essentially capture the underlying mechanism or physics of the process. Let's consider this example where in the cup there is coffee, hot coffee and the temperature field on the top surface of the cup is uh, actually responsible for the density variation on the top and that density uh, difference is driving the velocity field of the air surrounding the cup and the pressure field. So temperature is the mechanistic variable here that essentially controls the velocity and pressure. So physics information learning that is trained using the temperature data along with the coordinate and time can predict the velocity field or pressure field. So the concept of physics informed machine learning is emerging and there is a recent review in Nature Reviews Physics from which I took the example. Same concept can be apply, applied in additive manufacturing to reduce defect. So um, physics informed machine learning is a combination of physics based mechanistic modeling that calculates uh, the mechanistic variables and machine learning. As you can see from this picture that in additive manufacturing throughout the life cycle of the product, both machine learning and mechanistic model, they are helpful. And a uh, synergistic combination of machine learning, mechanistic model and the principle of metallurgy is helpful to reduce the defect in additive manufacturing. Essentially here I am going to talk about three common defects in additive manufacturing. Residual stress and distortion, lack of fusion and balling. So as you know that in additive manufacturing process temperature varies significantly and the transient and spatial variation of temperature field uh, results in accumulation of residual stress and distortion. And that is bad because it may result in defects like delamination, cracking, etc. Improper fusion between neighboring tracks causes lack of fusion defects that affect the tensile properties of the component. And our third defect is balling uh, that affects the surface quality and uh, affect the continuity of the track. So the track geometry does not look good and often you need to reject the part because of the balling defect. So essentially what we are doing here, we are taking the process parameters uh, from the uh, experimental conditions and use those process parameters to simulate uh, the process using the mechanistic model, heat transfer fluid flow model of the M process that calculates the mechanistic variable which are used to train the machine learning algorithm such as neural network, decision tree, so on and so forth. So computed mechanistic variables are used to train the machine learning and that's why we can capture the physics of the process through machine learning and essentially that is called physics informed machine learning. There are three unmistakable benefits of this process. 
the prediction of defect formation is much more reliable because here we are using uh, the variables that can capture the physics of the process. The second benefit is the hierarchical importance of the important variables that affect the defect formation. And this is important because that can give some idea to the engineers that which variable they can tune in to control these defects. And third, uh, based on the result from physics information learning, we can create process maps that can be readily used in soft floor to know what are the process parameters that need to be used to control these defects. So as we are talking about that uh, the mechanistic variables that are used to train the physics in for machine learning is actually computed using mechanistic models. So essentially uh, the mechanistic models we use uh, that takes the process parameters and alloy properties as inputs and compute temperature fields, cooling rates, uh, microstructure, solidification structure, uh, the properties of the part, the defect formation, everything in a uh, very comprehensive way. And um, essentially, we use heat transfer fluid flow model for this purpose that solves the equations of conservation of mass momentum energy and solve this equation in a computational domain uh, in 3D that essentially consists of substrate, the deposit geometry, the powders, and the inert gas surrounding it. It takes uh, process parameters and alloy properties as inputs and compute transient temperature and velocity fields in 3D, thermal cycles, cooling rates, solidification parameters, all you need to know uh, the defect formation. So, um, Let's say we are talking about um, around 250,000 cells to discretize the domain uh, for this numerical solution. And we, essentially we are solving for five main variables, three components of velocity inside the molten pool, pressure and enthalpy from which we can calculate the temperature field. So as a whole, we are solving 1.2 million algebraic equation and to simulate the uh, process, we need to solve this uh, equation iteratively. And let's uh, assume that we are solving 100 iteration per time step. That means 0.125 to 5 billion equations. And uh, as you know, that heat source is moving continuously. And to simulate that continuous movement, we need to discretize that in, let's say, 1000 time step. So at the end, we are solving. 125 billion equations. And how long does it take? In an inexpensive laptop, it takes 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you can get anything you want. So how accurate those results are? I'm just giving one simple example where experiments were done uh, using titanium alloy and the temperature was monitored using a thermocouple uh, near the deposit substrate interface and um, there are five layers that are deposited to make a thin layer, thin wall and you can see uh, the computed uh, temperature cycle uh, computed at the same location where we have the thermocouple during the experiment and the calculated result matches reasonably well with the experimental value. So that provides us some confidence that we can use this uh, model result to train the machine learning and uh, find out the ways to control defect formation. So our first defect is residual stress. So let me um, talk about how we calculate residual stress using mechanistic model. So it is coming from uh, the heat transfer fluid flow model that can calculate the 3D temperature distribution. And we extract the temperature data, the geometry and mesh data from the heat transfer and fluid flow model and export that uh, to Abacus by creating a ODB file, a database file by using a Python script. And that abacus based finite element model can compute the residual stress, strain, and distortion from the temperature field. 
so uh, it can give us uh, the residual stress distribution for different printing process and for the same printing process for different alloys and as you can see that uh, the difference in residual stress fields for different processes is very obvious like for arc based DD GMA since we can deposit uh, more material compared to powder bed fusion where we deposit thin layers often thinner than human hair the residual stress accumulation in arc based process is much more because of the cooling of large deposited mass and similarly we can compare for the same process the difference between titanium alloy and nickel alloy as you know titanium alloy has a little higher yield strength compared to the nickel alloy it can accumulate higher residual stress as this is obvious from this picture so as we can extract this computed residual stress along with other computed variable from heat transfer fluid flow model like things that are related to temperature deposit geometry as we know that are important for residual stresses and uh, train a machine learning algorithm that can essentially tell us which variable is important and uh, then we can provide a hierarchical importance of the variable so this picture is telling us that the temperature gradient the difference between the solidus and pre temperature is the most important variable comp contributing to the residual stress followed by the stress developed per unit temperature change and then pool volume and so on and so forth uh, for example pool volume is essentially captured the amount of material that is melting which is essentially representing the solidification shrinkage so uh, this kind of analysis using physics informed machine learning can tell us which variable to tune in and how much so that we can control the residual stress and the resultant delamination or cracking in additive manufacturing part so uh, these computed results when we use them to train uh, machine learning algorithms like neural network or random forest they can predict the residual stresses with an exceptional accuracy for example here the neural network and random forest can predict the residual stress values with an exceptional accuracy of 95 percent so as you can appreciate there are two benefits one which variable to control and when you train a neural network or random forest you can use those algorithm to predict for new condition how much will be the residual stress values so our second defect was uh, lack of fusion defect and as you know that lack of fusion defect uh, is largely affected by the geometry of the molten pool so uh, the computational process also starts with the uh, 3d geometry of the pool so as you can see this is a 3d isometric view of the molten pool um, where you can see the temperature fields that are elongated opposite to the scanning direction because of the rapid scanning and the temperature is high near the center of the pool and it decreases as we go further from the pool some from the center of the pool and if we look at the transverse section uh, we can view the transverse section that means the uh, transverse view of the area of the molten region and if we stack such region for multiple layers and multiple hatches we can get some idea of lack of fusion defect so you can see the white regions between neighboring tracks that is the source of lack of fusion defect so uh, if we know the temperature field uh, maybe it is coming from uh, the heat transfer fluid flow model or uh, some sophisticated temperature measurement like using infrared camera we can essentially extract uh, the pool shape and size by tracking the solidus temperature of the alloy and when we know the pool boundary we can extract the essential features 
uh, and quantify it so that we can use those variables to train a machine learning algorithm. For example, here, uh, this is the example where support vector machine based machine learning is used and uh, it can classify different condition based on defect will form or not. The red region is the region where the uh, um, there is high probability of defect formation, lack of, lack of fusion defect formation. And when people take that condition to do experiment, they can also find defect. So as you can appreciate, this kind of physics information learning can predict uh, defect formation before doing experiment. So you can avoid such bad abnormal processing condition before doing the experiment. So that will save time and money. And at the end, you will get a part that will have superior quality with no defect. Uh, our third defect is balling defect. And we follow exactly the same process. And uh, we found that for balling defects, there are uh, six important mechanistic variables that control the balling defect, as I pointed out here. And among them, Marangoni number is very influential because Marangoni number actually tells us um, the uh, fluid flow inside the molten pool. And uh, that fluid flow makes the temperature field inside the molten pool much more uniform and uh, that maintains the uniformity of the deposit geometry so there is no non-uniformity in the molten pool and the molten pool is continuous and it is not breaking up into small balls to form balling defect so like that you can appreciate that this uh, analysis based on machine learning is very consistent with the uh, physics of the process that we can capture using modeling and by experiment. So it is essentially giving a complete framework uh, that is based on data analysis, but can exactly tell you about the physics of the formation of the defect. Uh, but uh, more detail about applying mechanistic model and machine learning to reduce balling defect will be discussed by my colleague, uh, Dr. Young Du in this session and her talk is from 3.40 p.m. So uh, as summary, uh, we have used physics informed machine learning. That is a combination of modeling and machine learning to control defects. And we see that it's very effective to uh, identify the condition to reduce defect formation. As for residual stress, it can predict the value of residual stress with an accuracy of 95%. And it can provide the hierarchical influence of the contributing factors. So we can know which variable to tune in to control the defect formation. And when we can get the framework to control the defect, uh, we can produce high quality part and uh, for new alloys and uh, printing of new alloys will be cost effective for uh, small and medium businesses. And um, if we can take these essential components like mechanistic model and machine learning and augment that with experimental data, sensing and control, big data analysis, everything under one framework, uh, we call it a digital twin of 3D printing that can be used to control defects, accelerate the part qualification process, so on and so forth. So uh, starting from physics informed machine learning, we can go one step ahead, create a digital twin and solve several scientific engineering and economic problems in additive manufacturing. Thank you so much.